And for the list, we will gonna navigate away from search JS. We can close that tab at the moment. Then we have the recipes. And like I promised, why don't we talk about it for now? What is happening with this recipe data? Why I structured that data this particular way? And I don't think there is a better way how to show you than just going to food to fork, first of all. And then, as you can see, the moment you're going to sign up and hopefully you already did again, they're not going to charge you anything and they're not going to abuse your email. They're all just going to send you annoying emails where they're going to say, okay, your limit is exceeded, but that's not their fault. This is just their policy. At least they're not being annoying where they send you some dumb promotion emails or anything like that. And then as we look at their API and basically the way you get to the API is okay. So you would log in, obviously, in some case, which I already did. And then you have an option for recipe API. And by the way, okay, this would be the home page. This is where we're going to come first. Then you're going to be logging in, obviously. And I'm using, as always, my email that I have for the tutorials. And the moment you're going to log in, then you will have an option of going to recipe API within the recipe. They're going to show you your key. And by the way, by the time you're watching this, this is going to be deleted. So again, this is really up to you. But I would just suggest getting this because again, this is for free. You don't have to pay anything. And then they right away also give you a few options. They say, OK, if you want to search for a bunch of recipes, you need to use this URL where you have, again, API forward slash search. If you want to get information about specific recipe, this is the URL you need to use, where instead of search, we are placing get. So that would be the first thing that we're looking for. And then also, we need to understand that search query is optional, meaning when we're going to be getting our list, we're going to be getting without the search query. Later on, we're going to be searching actually with our search bar. Then, yeah, then we're going to be obviously using that. So that would be the first thing. Second, they right away give you an example where you can test them out. And that's going to be very nifty, by the way, if you, let's say, think that there's some kind of error or, you know what, not just think. Let's imagine scenario. You're going to be working on a project and you're going to be getting some errors in a console. Now, one of the things that might happen, you just run out of your 50. And trust me, this has happened to me quite a few times. So don't get discouraged by that. And the easiest thing how to check that you can just, again, copy and paste the query that they're offering. And I'm going to say that. I would like to open up the new browser tab and then I'm going to copy and paste my key. And if you're going to see that there's going to be some kind of result back here, that means that everything is working fine and you just need to fix your code. However, you're also going to have an option of where it says limit exceeded. So that way, you know, you run out of your calls. So it's not the code that you're writing that's giving you the errors. It's the fact that food for fork. It's just going to give you that response where the limit has exceeded. And notice something interesting. So I typed over here. This was my search. Now, obviously, this was uh, with a chicken things with basically chicken breast or something like that. Yeah, that was the example. But in general, this is the response that they were going to give you. And by the way, what I'm using is the JSON extension. And just to show you how this is going to work, you see over here all the way on the right hand side on the top. I have JSON view just to show you what kind of view you're going to get without this extension. Let's see. This is going to be my extensions. And then I'm going to disable it for now. And then let's refresh. And you'll probably see something like this. So that's the reason why I'm using that JSON view, because I think it's very nifty. And again, we're going to go back and I'm going to able it. And again, we can refresh. And this is the response that we're getting. So we're going to get 30 recipes. And in our case, we're going to get the most popular ones. In their case, they're getting like chicken breast or something like that. And then notice something interesting. So for each and every recipe, what do I get? I have the publisher. So that would be the name. Then I have the URL, which would be for the URL for food to fork. Then title, source. I mean, I can read all of them, but you can obviously see what's happening. And now let's look at my file. So what I have in recipe data, the one in the templates. Notice something interesting. I didn't copy all of them. I didn't copy all the key value pairs because we're not going to use all the properties. What we are interested in the publisher title, source, recipe ID and image URL. And that's the reason why we have the file. 
So this way we can structure our application just like they were gonna be sending us everywhere. And the moment we're gonna be done with creating our application, we can just hook it up the Ajax call. And then we're going to be getting exactly the same information. So we can just render it. That's all we're doing. So we can have our application without the Ajax calls, without wasting them. And that was the exact reason why I was doing that. And the same thing goes for the other one. I'm not going to show you this example because, again, the same thing is happening where if we're going to be looking for a specific recipe, I already looked at what kind of response they were going to give us. And that is the reason for the other file. Remember, we had two data files. One was them list, the other with them details. So I did the similar thing where I just looked some ingredients and then we're going to be having the rest of the things. So you can think of them as placeholders. We're going to create our application based on the responses that they were going to give us with some fake data. And the moment we're going to be ready for it, we are just going to use the Ajax calls to hook everything up. And that's all we're going to do. Hopefully you already have some kind of experience with Ajax. Basically, the way this is going to work, we're going to have to come up with some kind of way how we're doing our Ajax request. In our case, we're going to use the Fetch API, but obviously you can use all kinds of libraries if you want, or meaning the packages, NPM packages, let's say Axios, would be a very good way how you can do that. But in our case, we're just going to stick with Fetch API. We are going to be looking for this URL. And in our case, we're obviously going to have to add our key since we can get the actual information and then they were going to provide again back this json response where we we're going to have again count of 30 and these would be the recipes but for the single recipe it's going to be a little bit different and that's all that's going to happen obviously again we're going to return to this page for at least a second when we're going to start working with ajax calls we're going to kind of go over it everything again but in general, that would be the main idea. So that would be my setup. That is the reason why I use these files. And now we can finally start working on the recipe list.